Hey you, welcome back to Grease Monkey. This is a video going over some of the features or new features in 2.83 for the Grease Pencil in particular. So first thing you want to do is go to blender.org uh, and they have a new version now 2.82a which is a more the most stable version we have tw over 20 fixes to make it rock stable. Pretty neat. They update so quickly. But to do 2.83 and its new features we'll go to downloads uh, and go to scroll down and you'll see experimental here a big red band click on that and here it is 2.83 alpha so this of course is an alpha so there's still quite a few bugs i've had it crash on me a few times but this is just to check out those new sweet sweet features and also i would also pay attention to the date it came out march 14th you can come out in a week and still have 2.83 but maybe they updated it four times in between like i don't know definitely just and then you can always click here to see the new features and changes but uh, I'm just going to go over some of the ones that I liked, like to use from 2.83. So once it's downloaded, you'll have it, run it, and now you'll have 2.83 here, uh, 2.83.8, very close to 2.84. So here it is. So first thing we want to do is go to New, uh, File New, and then 2D Animation. Don't save. And now we're here on the classic 2D workspace for Blender. And the first thing I want to show you is the vertex colors. So let's go to materials here so you can see it on the side. And the material, uh, the, verte the vertex colors is an interesting feature. So let's say we go to solid fill here, which is a gray. And if I draw, you'll see that I have gray material. Oop, let me turn on my screencast keys. There we go. You'll see that I have a gray, gray material. And see, it's already kind of glitching out here. <laughs> so um not sure what is happening there but just emphasizing this is an alpha so in the materials it'll make gray as it shows here in the fill but if we go to vertex paint which is right here so these are the different modes material mode uh paint using the active material base color and paint the material using custom vertex color so we click on that it's green and then when we draw but it's still gray and the problem is is that it there's like an options for this that you have to make it uh, go to this fill so I right click here see the right mouse go to mode and you'll have stroke fill and both and if you do fill now it will be green and I thought that that was pretty interesting so since this is a fill and not a stroke that's why this option only works on fill fills on stroke this would need to have a stroke so let's make it white and you'll see that it is now affecting the stroke because in the mode it is set the stroke or you can set both and that will just make the whole thing um, green so that's how you use vertex colors what's interesting oh let me bring that back so what's interesting about this is that um, so you have all these different colors and before you would have to make a different a lot of different materials and you when you have all those different materials, you're able to select them and make them go away. But since they're all on the fill layer, they even though the green and gray, since I used this material, solid fill, these are all consi all considered solid solid fill or whatever this is named, you know, color whatever. And that's kind of what gets a little confusing because then we have the materials, I mean the layers for the stroke, and we have it all on this layer, and we have this material here. And it's that. So I'll show you a better example. So let's go to, let's say, this square stroke. We will make it red right here. Oops. So this is red now. Uh, I'm on square stroke. So right now it's still green. But if I go to materials, it's red. So I have a bunch of red. We go to vertex paint and it's green. So then now let's say I wanted to get rid of all the green, right? If I um, click on this it gets rid of those two greens that I made under the red stroke and then the green ones the red and the green so it can get kind of confusing because before you can just hit the green material and it'll get rid of all the green and then this this gets rid of these so you'd have to pay uh, in in 2.83 I don't know if they're gonna change it but you gotta pay attention more to the material the layer that you're in and the material that you're using and not to stray too far off from um, the colors so you don't uh, confuse yourself uh, if you work that way if you work by like building things up and this is just glitching out this is a good example uh, so that's one of the the features there so let's erase those 
So she raises health stroke. Delete. Let's make a new stroke. Blank. And we have the materials from before. We'll do the red. So the second thing I wanted to show you is the vertex lights. So let's say we draw a circle here. We will do a fill. It's green because of our vertex paint up here. And we wanted to put a light on it. Oops, there we go. And we'll put a light. We'll do a point light. Grab Y. Let's make the, the world dark so you can't see it. So as you see, the, the light's not affecting the grease um, the grease stroke and I, I had a lot of trouble figuring this out and it is a little confusing so first things first first go to your grease pencil in object mode and then go to this tab here object properties then though you'll see this uh, option here called grease pencil and this is use lights so that's one so that uh, the second thing you have to do is you go into grease pencil go into draw mode and then go into the object data properties which is the stroke your little stroke button make sure that this is selected use lights all right so now we got two options of using lights still not working so the third thing you have to do is in this uh, mode right now which is the viewport shading if you go here you'll see that shading lights is off but if we go to rendered uh it is on and that's what makes it work you can't really tell let me make it a uh, more exaggerated here we'll put on a spotlight there it is we'll power it to 100 color in a different color there it is so now we got our lights working and it was because i first needed to have the stroke in the object properties i'm sorry the properties here what's this called oh, i was right object properties grease pencil use lights because that'll turn it off as you see then you needed to go into the stroke under draw mode go to stroke and in, under the layers here you need this on and that turns it off and then the way that you view your viewport right here that turns it off so there's three there's like literally three buttons to turn this feature on and if any one of those are off it won't work so of course this will probably be, probably be fixed in 2.83 the stable version this is the alpha so they're still testing out these features as you see this is still a little glitchy and that's how you turn on the lights and you know uh, i think it's a pretty neat feature let's start again um and let's erase this let's put the monkey here nice suzanne and if we go to the rendered mode put on a light it's it's real nice you see and you can have the lights affect the stroke and I think that's a really, really neat feature that's going to be coming up. I guess if you can get past the glitching, I think it'll still render, render the same. All right. So there you go. That's the lights. Now, the second thing I wanted to go over is masking. And that's a little bit different, too. So let's go there. Go to draw mode. And my shape keys are gone again. Boom. Or screen keys. There it is. All right, so here we are. We have the material for the lines, boom, boom. And we have the materials for fill, boom, boom. So before, let me make a material before, we'll make call this circle to make it more readable. All right, so before what you would have to do is you have to go here and you would click on this little option here and that would be the masking for it. So let's move this to the top and you would hit mask. And this will only mask the thing in the bottom. And that was what was a little limiting about 2.82's version of masking. But now they added this little masking option here. So I'm going to put the circle back in the center here. So let's say I make a circle here. And we will use something with a fill, which is this. But I'll use a vertex paint. Oop, see, it didn't make it green, and that's because I didn't right-click, go to Mode, and then go to Fill. So see, that, see, there's a lot of, like, uh, trip-ups that happen just with these new features. And, of course, it's because they're being developed, and they're still being worked, and, and it's great that they, they let us uh, use this early. So, yeah, go right-click, Mode, Fill, and now we should have our green stroke. 
boom all right so now the way we would mask is so the 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 only one that we can't put a mask on is on the bottom one so everything above it is what we can put a mask on so let's say we want this circle and we want to cut off where the skin of suzanne here goes so we hit um this little button here and all that does is turn on this option here uh the mask toggle and it's like the same thing see it turns it on and then you here you can specify what you want it to mask so you want the circle to be masked by and you select the fill which is right here underneath which is the skin color fill and that's how you do the masking now you get to choose the layer you get to mask and uh, it's a pretty neat feature so there it is you got it masked you can then go to strokes 3d space this is what i like to do and then i like to then move this in front and now you got like this neat little feature here where you can make your own spotlight but see it's glitching out there all right so and then that's how you do masking and that's you, you do the same so you go if i move this to the top do the same thing it'll still be masked by that and uh that's that's masking because you can also choose a different one like go here lines and it'll only affect the lines so those are the three basic things i kind of oh and there's maybe one more thing maybe you can um there's a, a feature or a plugin in here let me erase this erase the circle there's a plugin in here that i thought was pretty interesting it's for a camera rig so let's delete this camera and if you go to edit preferences and you type in camera we have the add camera rigs you select that make sure that's turned on and if you i like to have my 3d cursor on there it is so this is a 3d cursor so you hit shift a go to camera and you'll see that there's a 2d camera rig and with this rig i you know i i used it but i'm so used to the normal cameras so let's see if i can break the the camera rig here and we will strictly do it from here and we'll get the camera rig grab it all right there we go so there's the camera to home team and what's interesting about this camera is that so these it has like these little tools here and you can get these in pose mode so you select the camera rig go to objects go to pose mode and now you have like what what the left corner of the screen is and you can move that around and it kind of like stretches the screen the right screen and you can move where the camera goes but what's interesting when you move the camera is this is where it's trying to focus on right here on, on this plane of existence i hope you could see this it's in blue uh it's trying to focus there and let me look at it from the side as you see it's right there so let's focus make it go to right where suzanne is so right there it's in focus but when you move the camera right here you'll see that it's distorting on the right and what it's doing is it's that it's keeping whatever's between those those two little little corners there keeping it in frame and changing the focal length to fit so that's why when we get really close it gets into a really wide camera and it starts to stretch so um i'm not sure uh how i would use this because i feel like i would just use a normal camera but just grab the camera itself i can move this around and keep the focal length Maybe it's just easier to visualize where the camera is looking so I can move the camera around and then for a, a like a zoom up or a focal change, maybe move this forward. But it's a it's a pretty neat camera rig. Um, and honestly, there's uh, another thing about this is when you're in pose mode and you select. I think it's one of these. Let's see, there it is. So when you're in pose mode, if you select the camera ring, it's the inner ring here, you'll see that you have your different um, options here. So you can change the aperture, the focal di distance, distance, uh, and the rot rotation um, shift. And these all are uh, all run on drivers and you can basically set your settings here so you don't have to dig into the camera. Because as you see, if you click on the camera, uh, where's the camera, camera rig? You can't select there's usually a camera icon here where you can change the settings so they put it in the 
this ring here so you can change it from here the most important ones and uh, that's the camera rig uh, that that plugin also has regular camera rigs for 3d maybe I'll get into that but if you go to camera and go to like a crane camera you'll see that this simulates like a crane a crane camera let's see Let me go into that go to pose mode because that's where you do this I believe and you have a crane that goes up and down oops see, I have not used this too <laughs> too much so definitely play with, with that stuff I I'm pretty sure you do it in pose mode this acts like a crane camera like on set like on a movie set so definitely check that out anyway that's that's everything that I wanted to show you with uh, 2.83 alpha that I thought was uh, important or that people cared about. There's a bunch of bug fixes, like making the strokes look smoother and less jagged. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of things under the hood are being fixed. The developers at Blender are great. Uh, that's kind of what I just wanted to show you. Thank you guys for watching. And I appreciate you guys. I'm getting so many new subscribers. And I'm, just let me just leave a comment or like and let me know what you want to see next because it really helps me decide what video to make next and what you guys actually want to see. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.